Welcome to The Chem Doctor. The purpose of this presentation is to teach the viewer how to calculate the heat capacity of a coffee cup calorimeter. Now what I have uh, shown on the screen here is the basic experimental uh, setup. I did this uh, the other day uh, by myself. I would have to say that in a student laboratory it's easiest if you have actually two people to handle this so that there's one person who can operate uh, heating the sample of water in the beaker and the other individual is uh, managing the coffee cup calorimeter that I'm showing over here on the right. Needless to say what you're going to do is have uh, the setup the following way. So you're going to have a beaker that's going to have some water in it. And What I did was I masked uh, the amount of water precisely. So I, I put an empty, a, a dry empty beaker on a scale zeroed the scale and that then added enough water to uh, get approximately 50 grams and the scale that I'm using had three significant figures on it or three decimals and so I recorded all three of these but I'm, I need to tell you through the calculations in the video I'm, I'm not going to pay any attention to uh, significant figures but the data I'm showing here is what I took directly off the instruments so what you're gonna do is uh, take the beaker put some water in it make sure to have the exact mass of the water that was placed on a hot plate that I turned on and I let that water uh, begin to heat. Meanwhile I set up a, a standard coffee cup calorimeter. I went ahead and masked into that 50 grams of water the, the exact same way that I handled the beaker so I took an empty styrofoam cup that was dry, put it on the scale, zeroed the scale and then added enough water to get approximately 50 grams and then recorded exactly what I had placed into the cup, which in this case was uh, 50.098 grams. And again, I just went ahead and recorded all the decimals. It's crucial with the coffee cup calorimeter that you get an accurate T1. So I went ahead and set this up so that I had the thermometer mounted uh, to a ring stand and then um, um, set up so that the uh, probe extended down into the water and I, I let this sit for several minutes to, to uh, be certain that the temperature uh, was constant and then I recorded that value here. Meanwhile the water in the beaker is heating and you you want to monitor this. The main thing is is that you want the temperature uh, of the water that is in the beaker to be suitably high enough so that when you transfer this material into the coffee cup calorimeter that we're going to get a significant temperature change over here and so basically what I decided to do when I uh, 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 to when I went ahead to uh, carry out this experiment was I decided to go ahead and let the water heat uh, into the mid 50s in terms of degrees centigrade on this all right, so once I had everything set up and ready to go and uh, the temperature was uh, fixed for the calorimeter, then I went ahead and monitored more closely the water that I'm heating on the, on, the, on the hot plate. And basically what you should do is insert the temperature probe here. You want to be mixing because um, if you let liquids heat on hot plates like this and you're not mixing them, you get convection currents and so on in the material. and uh, and the heating is not uniform so I went ahead and I mixed this and when the temperature uh, got into the mid 50s on it then I prepared to do the exchange now before I get into the nitty-gritty of of the actual determination of the heat capacity here I want to remind the viewer that this is a first law of thermodynamics problem and basically you need to understand that that the energy change the thermal energy change that occurs with the water that is in the beaker once we've transferred this into uh, the, the coffee cup and I'll show that this way with an arrow so we're going to transfer this material in here alright and then what's going to happen is using common sense right the water from the the beaker is uh, hot in comparison to the water that is um, in the let me find a cooler uh, color here the water that is in the calorimeter is cooler so there's going to be a change in thermal energy that will uh, move from basically the hot water into the cool water to, to, to talk about this on a really basic level. In any case, the delta H of the water that's in the beaker, the, the energy will, will be lost from the water in the beaker in, and will be gained by the water that is in the calorimeter. So uh, I, we can show a first law 
equation for each uh, for each compartment. And when we mix these two things together, the energy lost by by the water in the beaker will be exactly gained by the water that is in the calorimeter. All right. So when you do this. Uh, physically in the laboratory, it's a smart idea to have the location of the, the water that you're heating in the beaker close to where the calorimeter is. And the person who does the transfer really needs to be watching this because you want to note the temperature of the water that's in the beaker at the instant you transfer it into the water that's in the calorimeter. Otherwise, the results that you get in this experiment are, are going to be less accurate than, than you want. And again, you want to make sure to double check that the temperature of the calorimeter is fixed at the moment that you do this transfer. All right, so let's go ahead. We'll, we'll assume that we've done the transfer now. And we're, what we're going to do is, is uh, agitate the water. And the way I did that was by, again, I took the temperature probe here that, that I have extending down into my calorimeter and I did mixing. As I did the transfer of the hot water in to the calorimeter, you want to monitor what's going to happen with the temperature change in the calorimeter. And what I found when I did this was that the, the temperature of the calorimeter rose uh, to 39.7 uh, degrees centigrade, which was the peak. And I did, you do mixing here until you start to see that temperature uh, drop. And then this is the temperature that, that is recorded. All right, so now let's go ahead and do the calculations. So what I'm going to do first is uh, calculate my delta H um, for uh, the beaker. I'm just labeling it this way, so for the water that's in the beaker. Note that, that the delta H that we get here should have a negative sign in front of it when we're done doing the calculation because this portion of, of liquid actually lost energy. Now, uh, to calculate this, you're going to record the mass of the liquid that was in that particular um, sample. So it's 49.661 grams. The specific heat capacity of, of the liquid is 4.184 joules per degree C per gram. And then the temperature change is going to be uh, 39.7 degrees centigrade because this is where the temperature of this material finished all right and it, it will be minus what we started with which is going to be my t1 here that i i put an asterisk on to indicate that this was the initial temperature of uh of the of the hot liquid that we transferred so this is 50 um 6.9 degrees uh centigrade and you'll see that we'll pick up the negative sign here. Again, the negative sign just indicates the direction in which the uh, thermal energy moved. And to be clear about this, the temperature change here that we have for the hot body or the hot liquid is minus 17 degrees, minus 17.2 degrees centigrade. So the total date delta H here that, that's lost uh, by the liquid in the calorimeter is going to be um, a minus uh, 3,574 joules. All right. Now, similarly, and I'm going to go ahead and change the color here. Similarly, for the uh, calorimeter, the delta H, and I'll label it, uh, will now involve its mass. So it's 50. 0.098 grams for the liquid that that was um, situated in the calorimeter. The specific heat again is going to be uh, 4.184 uh, joules per degree C per gram for the water that's in the calorimeter. All right, and the temperature change of the calorimeter is going to be 39.7 degrees uh, centigrade minus its T1, which is a different T1 than the liquid that was heated. So the, the T1 for the calorimeter is 24.2 uh, degrees centigrade. All right, and the delta T that we're going to have for the calorimeter is 15.5 degrees centigrade. All right, so the total energy gain, because remember, the calorimeter is gaining energy, uh, the, the liquid in the beaker is losing energy. 
all right? The energy transfers from the liquid in the beaker into the calorimeter. So the total energy gain for the calorimeter is 3,249 joules. Now you'll notice that when you look at these two numbers, the first law of thermodynamics says that these two values should be the same, but they're not. You can see that the energy that was lost by the liquid in the beaker is actually a larger value and magnitude than the energy that was gained by the calorimeter. So where did the energy go? This is the energy that was actually lost into the calorimeter setup itself. So this is, um, how do I want to mark this? This is, I'm going to, I actually I'll use words to, to talk about this. So this is energy um, that was lost by the, the calorimeter itself. All right, so we're talking here about the coffee cup, the insulated coffee cup. All right, we're talking about the uh, temperature probe and so on. All right, so basically all of, all of the stuff that is holding the water that is in here, including even to some degree the air that is sitting over the, uh, over the surface of the liquid, so that's where that energy went. So what we want to do now is actually calculate the heat capacity of that material. So that is simply going to be related to the difference in energy between these two magnitudes. So let's go ahead and begin to calculate the, uh, the, the heat capacity of uh, the calorimeter. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the energy difference between those values. So I'm going to use two deltas uh, to indicate that and I'll label it calorimeter and we're gonna drop the, the the negative sign here because again this sign is just telling us direction that the heat moved in relationship to the the two materials that were combined so the Delta Delta H of this will be uh, 3574 joules minus uh, let me clean this up a little bit so it's uh, easier to see. So this is a joule. Let me get my writing better. All right, and this is going to be minus 3,249. The difference, so the energy that was transferred into the stuff is 325 joules. Now we're not quite to the heat capacity of the calorimeter yet because by definition heat capacity will be joules per degree C and the degree C that we're interested in here is the temperature change that occurred in the calorimeter that's this value here which is 15.5 degrees centigrade so we're going to be using that value to find the heat capacity of the calorimeter so now we're going to take the 325 joules and we're going to divide by um, we're going to divide by the temperature change in the calorimeter, so it's going to be 15.5 degrees uh, centigrade. All right, and the value that we're going to get, and I rounded this for simplicity, is going to be 21 joules per degree centigrade. So this is the amount of energy per degree centigrade that the that the, that the stuff, the calorimeter um, material, the styrofoam, the temperature probe, the air. Uh, over the surface of liquid and so on is going to absorb per degree centigrade during an experiment like this. All right, and uh, let me again, sorry about uh, the writing here, let me just clean that up really quick so it's really, really clear. Well, as clear as I can get. All right, now I'm going to go ahead before I finish this video and do one more thing for you. So, wait, let me label this. So, this is the heat capacity. in clear language of calorimeter, which was the goal of our, our presentation. Now I'm going to take this one step further and I'm going to go ahead and take this number and we're going to calculate the specific heat of the calorimeter. All right, the specific heat of the styrofoam temperature probe and so on. All right, and to do this, all we need to do is take the heat capacity, which is 21 joules, 
per degree C and divide it by the mass of the calorimeter uh, itself, including the water. All right, so this is going to be 50.098 grams. And we're going to arrive at a specific heat, which is going to be 0 0.42, and this will be joules per degree C per gram. So basically what this value allows you to do is that once you've got your calorimeter set up, because in a different experiment you might not use exactly 50.098 grams of water. For example, in a lot of these experiments you might end up using 100 grams. So this would allow you to determine the heat capacity of the calorimeter in a different set of conditions where you would be using a different mass of water, which if you're, if you're actually massing these samples out at the beginning of your experiment like I illustrated here or as I did in my own experiment the other day, then the truth is in the very next experiment, the likelihood that you're going to actually have 50.098 grams exactly of water in that calorimeter is really slim. So by generating the specific heat of the calorimeter in, the, in any experiment now, you can go in and you can determine basically um, the amount of heat that is going to be either absorbed or lost by the calorimeter depending on the type of experiment that you're doing. All right, so I'd like to thank the, the, the viewer for taking the time to watch uh, this video. You can find more videos at www.chemdoctor.org.